So hello everyone, this is Apostle Jason Green and this is my story, my testimony of how I overcame through the blood of Jesus Christ. Um, well, I grew up as a young inner city child, come to California, uh, single mother, uh, single parent household, was raised by my mother. Uh, being uh, the fact that I was raised by my mother left me in some situations where we didn't have a father in our home, didn't have a male figure and it led me down the wrong path. Many uh, youth, young adults in America are going through this. And so what it caused to happen is it caused me to deal with certain rejection issues, abandonment issues, and um, I had inner anger just from not having my father there, uh, just from not having a male figure to walk after. And so I was raised predominantly by women and it bred a perversion in me, let me into a, a lifestyle of homosexuality had the ground of my heart uh, just in the aspect of being not properly cultivated and so um, my mother uh, was dealing with a drug addiction at the time and uh, left some open doors for me to be molested sodomized and uh, just planted some some seeds of rejection that later uh, took me down the path of a lifestyle of homosexuality lifestyle of perversion lifestyle of confusion and so, through the grace of God, uh, through the blood of Jesus Christ, uh, I stand before you today just to share a testimony of how uh, through church hurt, through family hurt, uh, through these different aspects, this Holy Spirit and the love of God begin to draw me uh, out of these different areas of darkness. And uh, I'm able to stand before you here and uh, give a declaration of victory to somebody that's been bound up, to somebody that feels like there's no hope that this is something that you're stuck in, that this is something that you were born in, that this is just the end, and you've accepted it, you stop fighting. Um, and I'm just, just here to tell you that it's not over. And that through the Holy Spirit, through the blood of Jesus, through the Word of God, and through receiving the gospel of Jesus Christ, your life can transform. Um, it started off, I believe, when I was about three years old. Uh, just uh, We had some people that were surrounding us uh, that were involved in some... Uh, some, some crazy religious things, witchcraft, uh, Masonic rituals and things. And initially I was to be bred as a warlock, a spirit channeler. And so there are some, some uh, sodomite rituals that were done on me to make sure that I would be a harborer of perversion, a harborer of incest, molestation, anger, rage. And um, through these different acts, uh, I, I grew up uh, just from the environment being surrounded by women, uh, not having a male figure there. I grew up uh, with an effeminate, uh, just effeminate characteristics. And from hearing, uh, you know, uh, verbal uh, shots being thrown at me, of being a sissy or being soft, it bred a rejection, but also it bred a, a anger. There was no male figure there for me to look up to. And so I spent my life trying to fight against uh, being identified as homosexual, being identified as gay, being identified as soft, and so I became angry internally. Um, and that began to just breed uh, uh, disdain just for um, the women that were around me, just because there was no male that were there. And so uh, once um, I was left alone and these initial acts of uh, sexual uh, perversion began to happen, uh, I began to, to stuff things. I was angry with my mother, I was angry with my family members. I was wondering who my father was. My identity began uh, to question. I had an affinity uh, for uh, men. I had an affinity and an attraction for males. I knew it was wrong, uh, but there was just something breeding inside me. And so as I, as I grew older, um, there's other, uh, other incidents happened in which I was molested. Um, just perversion uh, crept in. And so by the time I reached uh, my teenage years, we had the curiosity that was there and all the new things that were coming uh, around me, uh, middle school, uh, high school, the curiosity began to take form and I began to just involve myself just around uh, people that were involved in homosexuality. Um, I remember initially uh, when I actually got involved in the lifestyle, we had the seeds from when I was younger. Um, I, had to, I had to go through a situation where I had to take care of my younger siblings. Um, I had to take care of them. My mom wasn't uh, she wasn't capable at the time. And, um, and so I just kind of 
uh, I met some people through the party line and just kind of hung out with them and uh, they paid me just to act like I was uh, a boyfriend or something and then there was no sexual activity and morally this was wrong for me uh, I knew it was wrong but I needed to take care of my family and so I did what I needed to do to take care of my siblings and so just uh, you know the scripture declares uh, bad company corrupts good character and slowly but surely after doing this uh, this money came at a greater price uh, not just hanging around now you know there had to be some other steps and uh, being that I was young I didn't have wisdom and have insight and have anybody you know, spiritually kind of guiding me mother was kind of incapacitated I did what I had to do and uh, what that began to do is awaken those seeds that were already dormant within me and I started to slowly but surely uh, drop morals and drop standards and become more acceptable uh, to the homosexual lifestyle and uh, one thing led to another and I became an agent if you will of that lifestyle and so from being on one who was totally against it one who totally hated uh, in a sense homosexuals because of the incest and the molestation that was going on now I became an advocate for it uh, became very uh, uh, bold, very flamboyant, very aggressive, very in your face with it, because now uh, the prey has become uh, the predator. And um, it just took me down a, uh, a path I was not supposed to go down. And um, I, I grew up in the church, going to church. I knew, I knew things were wrong. And uh, once uh, things begin to breed inside of me and I would go to church. All that we hear was messages of condemnation for homosexuals, abomination, you're going to hell. I didn't hear a message of hope. And so uh, what this began to do is push me away from God. I was angry uh, that I was molested. I was angry that I was, uh, you know, raped in these different things that were going on. And uh, I didn't, you know, I felt like this was some curse or some, Condemnation or something that the father just kind of left me, left me there. And um, I just wanted out. I, I wanted help. I wanted to change. I knew it was wrong, but I felt like I was entangled in this and there was no one to help. There was no one in the church that understood. There was no one in the church that reached out to me. And so this led to me actually pushing me farther and farther into the, the culture of homosexuality from man from just going and hanging out with people that were homosexual to now going to clubs to smoking weed to now stripping to now just you know being out there wilding and I had totally turned into a different person I was going through these phases where I thought I was Cisco and I was wearing blonde hair and I was wearing braids and beads and uh, my body became uh, this bargaining chip this bargaining tool in which I got what I wanted. And uh, I totally was just devaluing myself. And um, it led to, um, it led to me just kind of being very disrespectful towards God, I had a disdain for him. I would just make comments and it, it wasn't good. I would uh, blaspheme the Holy Spirit. And I remember, I remember after about, Uh, it was probably like 2000, 2001, I started to uh, just hear the voice of God call me and it almost tormented me that, you know, I would go places, people would say, did you have a call upon your life? I knew within me that I had a call upon my life, but I, I just felt like God couldn't use me. I had ruined that. You know, he couldn't use me. I'm homosexual. What can you do with me? And I remember... Um, you know, God just draw, trying to draw me through different people. Going to church, I would feel uh, God speaking to me and calling me. Uh, and I ran. And uh, I dropped out of, I was going to church for a while. I was bringing people to church. And uh, one, of the, one of the things uh, I remember that was really life-changing for me, I realized I had a problem. <clears throat> I was bringing all of my friends to church. We were standing comp at a time. I was bringing all my friends to church. And there was a pastor of a four-square church, Horace Dolby. And he, he rebuked me about uh, the flamboyant lifestyle. 
He, he rebuked me openly about it in front of people. At the time, I was immature about it. I was angry with him about it. And uh, But what it did is it showed me uh, that it didn't matter how many people I was bringing to church. It didn't matter what nice thing I did for church. He, as a pastor, was concerned about my soul. And he wasn't just going to sit there and let that happen. And so, you know, in my arrogance and pride, I left the church, uh, cut my hair from being blonde back to black, took the beads off, gave back the choir robe. And I just, I was like, whatever, uh, you know, and, and, you know, I was going to the church and there was people in the choir sleeping around with each other. There was no conviction. We would sing on Sunday, go to the club that night, come back and sing. And there was no checks and balances. There was no discernment. It was just all about, you know, singing unto God, but it was something I didn't live. I didn't want to be a false worshiper. And it led to uh, me leaving the church for about three, four years, uh, hating God, uh, having a disrespect for authority. And um, yeah, I, uh, I ended up having about like three, three car accidents, back to back, kind of death was coming after me. And I was at the point to totally surrender every homosexual relationship I tried to have, it fell apart. Every relationship I was having with a woman, it totally fell apart. Uh, people just, my whole world began to cave in. And I believe this was God telling me time is up. And um, I still didn't listen. I still didn't listen. I started to smoke weed. I started to drink. I started to go to more uh, clubs, whatever. Uh, the more I heard God, the more I felt this call, the more I did the contrary. I was trying to drown out this call. It just wouldn't go away. Uh, I couldn't send myself out of it. I couldn't disqualify myself. He had called me before I was born. This was an eternal call. And now I was fighting against his perfect will. 2004, I believe it was August 8, 2004, uh, I tried to commit suicide. And it was that night uh, on my bed uh, that I heard the voice of God. Uh, or the voice of the Holy Spirit audibly speak to me and tell me, you know, stop, give me your life, I'll make it worth living. Uh, morally, I, I just totally collapsed. Uh, I had all these different identities, I damaged different lives, and everything was just in shambles. And um, I surrendered then. It was the best decision that I've ever made. I was, uh, I was a recipient of God's grace. He was patient. He was merciful to me. Uh, I knew better, but I chose different. And he brought me back from a reprobate mind, from a mind just to totally turned the opposite way. And um, I answered my call. And that's why I'm here today, just to speak to you that are watching. Uh, that response, that yes, I gave God years ago is the reason why I'm here now. I would have been dead. I would have been <laughs> in hell now, uh, living out my pleasure, living out what my flesh wanted. I had to learn that, that day how to cru crucify and how to kill this flesh, how to put to death what separated me from the Father. One of the hard things was that everybody around me, well, actually everybody around me was more churched out than I was, but they were homosexual, they were popular, they were famous, they were the who's who's. I just wanted to live, and my, con my concern, my question was, uh, if you have a problem with this that I'm living, why is it that they are okay with it? And he said, because they left relationship with me a long time ago, and I wanted relationship with the Father. I wanted, I wanted him. I didn't want power. I didn't want to be known. I just wanted to live, and uh, he showed me how to, how to crucify this flesh, how to mortify it, how to tell what was in my flesh, no, how to tell homosexual urges, no, how to kill perverse thoughts, how to have the proper people that are around me, how to get rid of ungodly affections so that I can be the man that I was originally created to be before all these hands got upon me, or all this damage was done. And the Lord just blessed me, turned my life totally around, uh, given us uh, what you're going to experience in Project Lot. And there's a ministry uh, for those that are dealing with perversion, uh, sexual, moral perversion, those that are involved in the lifestyles of homosexuality, lesbianism, 
uh, transgenderism. If you just, you know, wilding out, you need to learn how to value your body, how to value your temple, how to live right, how to stay holy. Uh, we're gonna have accountability teams, uh, people who hold you accountable to the word of God and also be a listening ear to what's bothering you, to what's hurting you. I'm gonna hold you to the standard of the word of God, walk you through that process. If you stumble, I'm gonna have people there that can pick you up, dust you off, set you on the path again. It's not a hopeless situation. It's not over for you. And you may be saying, you know what, I don't even believe. Just, just try it. I challenge you to give God a try to put one foot forward. Scripture says, if you draw near to God, God will draw near to you. It says in the scripture that it is our sins that separate us from him. And for too long, we've been having long distance communication, long distance relationship with God. And it's time for us to come closer even those that are in the homosexual community. For too long, you've been standing on the outside, waving at God for long distance, yelling at God. And God wants to come close to you, but it's your sin that is separating you from him. I challenge you to just put it aside and see what his love is like. His love is better than any man. His love is better than any woman. It will set you back on a proper course, set you down a proper path for life. Get ready because Project Lot is coming near you, near a city, near you. Amen. <laughs>